Hey guys, Scott here again with another video update. Uh, first of all, thanks to all of you that commented on the uh, previous video, the uh, channel update, uh, new PBX video. I was really surprised with the response on that. In less than 12 hours, I had like 10 or 15 comments and everything was resoundingly positive. So I really appreciate everyone's uh, comment. So um, that being said, uh, this is another quick update video. Uh, in the last 48 hours or so, I think that's elapsed since... Um, you guys saw that quick update about the phone system. I've gotten all of the phones that I want in the house set up and operating. Um, like I may have mentioned in the previous video, I actually had a phone system in the, in the house already. It was just in a via IP office 500 version two, I think. And uh, that's a great system. It works fine. It just uh, wasn't quite as capable of some of the things that I wanted. One of the big things that I wanted was a system that was, that would natively support rotary dial like pulse dialing phones. And uh, that's what this new PBX does among many other things. So you can already see behind me this, uh, this 7407, which is the attendant phone. But this video is just gonna be a quick overview. I'm just gonna go through each of the rooms in the house and show you what phone's in there, what it looks like. Um, but I've gotten a lot done. I got um, all the cabling done, at least in a temporary sense. Uh, I've got to make a run to my storage unit in North Carolina and uh, start getting stuff out of there. I've got a whole box of 25 pair cable and 100, uh, 110 blocks, 66 blocks, cable management things, things like that. So I want to go get all that stuff so that way I can make the uh, the home DF, the home MDF, uh, nice and uh, and production quality looking. Um, especially if it, um, my thing is if it's going to have my name on it, it needs to look nice and it needs to be done properly. So. Um, I'm not saying I'm going to read the Bell System Practices page by page, but I want it to look presentable, but also be easy to maintain. So I'm sure there's a 50-50 balance somewhere in there. But anyways, all that crap being said, uh, let's go look at the phones in the house. All right, guys. So this is the first phone that I'll cover because this is actually the first extension on the system. This is extension 5020. Uh, it also works as a dial zero phone. So if you go to any of the phones and dial zero, this is what phone is going to ring. Um, this is a AT&T 7407. It's a digital set. Uh, it requires four wires to up, to operate. Uh, unlike the newer 8400 series that can do either two or four wire. Um, it has the 10 of the dual LED function keys, like programmable function keys. These are typically used for line appearances. So I have mine programmed for five line appearances. Uh, these down here are called display buttons. They only have one LED, so I have them programmed for features. So like you'll see here, I have HFAI, which stands for hands-free answer back on intercom. That's not actually what it's called on this system, but any of you that's that have worked in the industry, especially with Avaya products, will probably recognize this from uh, some of the, I believe, the Merlin Biz series phones, like the BIS Biz series phones that had the full-fledged speaker phones had this function. But basically, when I turn this on, what happens is, is any intercom call I get is going to play a brief burst of ring and then a short tone, and then immediately the speaker phone becomes active. So if you ever see like a Hollywood movie where you have an important CEO and their, uh, rece the receptionist will say, you know, boop, you know, Mr. Johnson, so-and-so is here to see you, that's what that feature is. So obviously, I leave that turned off most of the time. But because uh, I like the ringers on the phones, but the phones in the common areas in the house, I do leave that feature on. So that way, if I have guests over or whatever, I can come on and say, hey, there's food in the kitchen, that kind of thing. So anyways, that's it for the 7407. So let's move across the room. Um, we're actually in my office right now. Um, I have a work from home setup where I have another phone, but this is the attendant phone. So like this is where I edit my videos and things like that right here at this desk. So anyway, moving forward. All right, guys, so this is the second extension I'll cover. This is extension 5021. Uh, this is my, uh, my my actual work from home space. I'm an IT project manager, and I work for a Virginia-based IT company. And uh, and they're gracious enough to allow me to work from home remote, uh, remotely full-time, so I'm able to, uh, you know, to enjoy my office while I work. So that's my work provided, Mitel 6930 phone. Not really going to cover anything on that. It's pretty standard desk phone, voice over IP desk phone. Uh, but what you guys want to see here is this is my 7406 plus. It has a two line display. It's basically the same as the 7407. It's just a little bit narrower and has fewer feature keys. 
Um, it still has the standard style Merlin handset with the, uh, with the little AT&T logo, which I think is really neat. Uh, especially, the, you know, down here. Um, the, uh, the standard extension button programming plan I came up with for all the phones in the house. This is also one of the labels that I did, by the way. Um, all the phones have brand new labels. Um, this label scheme is kind of weird. This is actually, this whole piece is actually just a plastic overlay that just kind of friction fits in here. So rather than make a paper label that has these cutouts for the LEDs and stuff, um, I just, uh, I basically just, I took a caliper and I measured the windows were the see-through windows, and I just made a table on Microsoft Word, um, and each each one is a separate row, and basically you just fill out what you want there, and then you just print it out, and then you just cut it out with scissors, and then you just take, uh, I used some 3M number two painter's tape, because it's nice and gentle, um, and uh, it keeps the, uh, you know, I, I stuck the, the paper label to the back of this. So like I'll show you. So these are membrane keys, which is cool. So if you don't know what a membrane key is, if you've used a microwave oven in the last 30 years, you know what a membrane key is. So you'll notice there's no physical button here. This is a flat surface. So you'll see here if I click. So I press the button for attendant. So you'll see the phone over there is ringing. Anyway, so that's how the membrane buttons work. But what's cool is it's basically like a, a matrix or grid of vertically separated electrical contacts. And when you press, so think of this as the button vertically, right? When you press them, the little grid of different, of separate contacts just get close enough to touch and it creates a closed loop. So that's how the phone knows you touch the button. It's the same way microwave ovens work and there's a bunch of different pieces of technology that use that. But anyway, so that's it for this extension. You know, pretty standard stuff. It's a 7406. So let's move on to the to uh, the master bedroom where I have another one of these. All right, guys, we're here in the master bedroom, also known as my room. Um, I have a pretty basic nightstand. It's just a Sterilite thing with three drawers because I don't care. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's a place to put my phone when it's charging and that's about it. So uh, that's my Sony Dream Machine uh, alarm clock. I've had that alarm clock my entire life. Um, my maternal grandmother bought my parents that alarm clock in 1993 when they got married and they had it forever. And then I had it and I kept it. And I used to, um, when I was younger, um, I used to listen to John Tesh radio show all the time on that thing. I'd hit the sleep button and it would play uh, the FM radio for an hour. But anyway, this I'm getting out of the scope of the video. This is another 7406 plus. Uh, you can probably see this one a little bit better because the lighting in this room is much better than in my office. But um, it's also, you'll, you'll recognize that HFAI button. Uh, and then, and you know, I've got a couple other basic features. Most of the buttons I've just used for, for uh, auto dial buttons for, for uh, phones around the house. So that way, if anybody comes over that doesn't really know how to use very, phones very well, they can pretty much deduce that this is, this is a button, um, you know, that calls another phone in the house. So you'll see I've got some features programmed up here. So this one that's lit is normal slash exit, which is kind of an odd nomenclature. But basically what it is, is these phones, it puts the, it's like an exit button, which is why I put forward slash exit. When you actually program this key in the PBX programming, it's just called a normal key. But I'll show you what that looks like. So let's say I wanted to see the current date and time. So if I hit this show date and time button, you'll see it pops up there. But let's say I want that to go away. See that? I'll do it again. So it's basically telling you the, uh, oops, the display is in uh, normal mode, which I wish it would show the time, but in this case, these phones just show nothing. So, um, oh yeah, so that brings another thing that's special about these 7406 phones that I actually forgot to mention when I was in my office. So these phones actually have quite a few feature keys. So these first, I believe these, yeah, these first five are the typical dual positions. So you'll see how it's lit red. What the red LED means is that's the appearance that you're going to get if you go off hook. So like you'll see how I lift the handset and it says A. Notice that matches the label. If I press B, 
you see how that lights up, so on and so forth. Um, if you press a key that's not programmed, it just blinks at you like that. It just tells you that there's nothing there. So anyways, this select key has a special function. It's kind of like hitting shift on a keyboard to get a capital letter. So these other keys, so this one, this one, and this one have only green LEDs on them. And then these have no LEDs at all. You'll notice how there's a gray shaded area on each key. Uh, there's actually two keys per button, like two logical keys per button and one fit for, for one physical button. So if I hit the select key and I press this button, you notice how nothing happens. It's because I don't have anything programmed on the upper part of these keys. Cause I just, I keep hitting that one. It's so sensitive. Um, it just basically shows you that you have, so you could have, let's say I had, you know, another five phones in, on my house, in my house or on my property. I could hit select and then I have another phone here. So I'll show you exactly how that works. So I'll do a quick paging announcement over all the phones. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Thanks. I should have said blue eyed special on aisle four, <laughs> but um, you'll see how the, the lower option in the key that I put in italics is what you get when you press the button normally. However, if I hit select, notice how it lights up. If I hit that. Welcome to Audit. For help at any time, press star H. Please enter extension. Anyway, so you'll see how that works. There's also the directory. Um, so I'll hit select. You'll see I can enter a name. So like if I just hit five, there's a bunch of old extensions on this system uh, that I haven't like removed. So, you know, I can basically press random keys and you know, there's different um, different phones on the system, but you get the idea. So like if I want to, I'll show you again what that normal button does. So now you'll see there how it exits the directory. So anyways, that's it for the phone in my bedroom. Moving on. All right, guys, moving into the guest bedroom. You'll see here we've got another 7406. This one is a Via branded. So you'll see it's actually a little bit newer. So this one was probably refurbished at some point by a Via. Uh, you'll see it's still got the same standard button program as all the other sets. You know, pretty standard stuff. You know, I can do a, a uh, page announcement. Attention Walmart shoppers. Would the owner of a white Ford please come to the customer service desk? Your car is on fire. Thank you. Hopefully you never hear that announcement when you're in a store, but it is kind of fun to be able to do it in your house. But anyway, that's it for the uh, guest bedroom phone. Moving on. All right, guys, so like you may have noticed, I said in my uh, previous video that the house that I live in was bought, or excuse me, I bought it from the original family that built it in 1955. It was a husband and wife that worked at a paper mill that was across the river from where I live currently. So this was really exciting. This was one of two houses that I looked at to buy, and this is one of my favorite features I've ever had in a house. This, for those of you that haven't already figured it out, this is a phone nook. Because back when this house was built in the, in the, you know, in 1955, this, you had one phone and there was just the phone that was in the house. That was it. There weren't extension phones in the bedroom because phones were rented from the bell system and you had to pay per month per phone. And most people couldn't afford to have a bunch of different phones around the house. So you just had the phone in the one place and this is where the phone would be. So I played around with a couple different phone types to see what would fit here. But thinking about the like lineage of the different models of phones as they progressed, um, I figured this Western Electric 302 would be an exact fit. And if you see, looking under my directory there, the phone is pretty much a perfect fit in there. I do need to mount this biscuit jack. Um, this cable was originally hardwired, and I just did that quickly to make it work. You'll see here it also has a shelf. This is probably for the very small... Uh, bell system personal directory that they would give you when you when you signed up for service they would give you a little booklet that you could keep your personal numbers in and that would fit on this little shelf right here i actually got really lucky i live in tennessee and i found on ebay a south central bell athens tennessee telephone book because i live pretty close to athens tennessee and so it actually covers uh, the city that i live in so anyways i'll show you the phone and actually how it works here so you'll see here, it's actually got, um, I don't know if that's original or if somebody put that in there after the fact, man, I need to, I need to dust it. I need to dust this thing, but, um, it will dial out. So I'll show you, we can actually dial zero and it will ring the attendant phone in my office. 
You can actually hear the uh, you can hear the attendant phone ringing in my office. So that's the Western Electric 302, and uh, now let's move on to the kitchen where I've got another phone. All right, guys, we're in the kitchen. Um, originally, in when I bought this house, there was a early 2000s Honeywell um, Vista, you know, one of the early Vista series alarm panels here, the very typical household ones. So there was already a cable dr drilled through the wall. My big thing with this house is I really didn't want to... Uh, I mean, you look at everything in here is custom built into the house. All the wood is original. Uh, the floors in here have been redone, but um, everything else is original. So everything you see here was was actually hand built to fit into this house. And one of my big rules to myself, I said to myself that when I bought this house, that I was not going to change any of this stuff. I was going to leave it alone. It had It had the exact character in the house that I wanted. But the one thing I didn't like was that ugly alarm panel on the wall. So I replaced it with a ITT 500, or I'm sorry, 554 wall set. Um, and this is extension 5028 on the phone system. Um, in fact, I'll show you, since I knew you guys were probably disappointed, the Western Electric 302 that's just right around the corner here. Um, I can actually call it so you guys can hear it ring. So let's give it a call. That's extension 5029. But there you go, that's the 302 ringing. So we'll hang up here. And then we will move on to the next phone in the house. This one's a little bit more interesting. All right, guys, so this is my side porch. Um, you'll see my, uh, you know, I've got my driveway here. That's my imported Toyota Crown that I've got. Um, and then, uh, you know, this is the edge of my property here. But anyway, so this is my front, uh, my front porch. And this is a Viking analog door phone intercom. Um, it's, what I would call a dumb device. It's just basically a speakerphone with a very fancy weatherproof box. And don't worry, yes, I'm going to eventually put screws in here. But it's actually covered by a, a ceiling, so it's not super high on my priority list. But anyway, so this is extension 8243 on my phone system. It was the highest extension number that was already built out. So I just renamed it and reassigned it to the port I wanted. But anyway, so when come, somebody comes to the door, if they have a signature required delivery, um, I know most of my delivery people on a first name basis. I mean, it's, it's a small town, so everybody's really nice. And, and uh, I, I don't think anybody has ever actually used this, but because they all know me by name anyway. So they know it's safe to deliver stuff here. But anyway, so um, this is just basically an analog ring down device. So all it does when I press this button is it just goes off hook and it doesn't do anything else. Um, you could put a programmable dialer behind it if you want. Um, but the way I did it is, is programming in the phone system. There's a hotline feature. And I won't get into specifics on the programming because it's not super interesting. But basically, I was able to program it that when this goes off hook, the phone system will dial zero for it. So if I go off hook. So now if we go in the house. You'll hear the attendant phone ringing down my hall. All right, guys, now we're in my living room. I have another 7406 Plus in here. Um, this one, I think, is a little bit newer because you notice the LEDs are a little bit brighter. Um, over the course of, you know, some of these phones are 30 years old. Some of the, the stickers on the bottom of these with the AT&T logo say like 1993. So the phones are actually two years older than I am. But, um, but yeah, so this has the same standard extension plan on it. This one, I actually remember I mentioned the hands-free answer back on intercom feature. This one, I actually keep that turned on because, uh, you know, if somebody's out here and I'm in my office or whatever, and if I want to say, hey, come look at this video or something, I can come over the speaker on the phone. So, in fact, why don't I go back to my office and I'll actually call the phone in here and I'll show you what happens when a phone is on hands free answer back on intercom. All right, so this is an example of hands free answer back on intercom. Obviously, there's nobody in the room where you are right now so they can't talk back to me. But in this example, I can speak to you hands-free, and uh, if you happen to be working across your office or something and hear me come over the speaker, you can just immediately 
um, you can immediately respond to whoever's calling you instead of having to dive across the room and try to grab the handset before the other person hangs up thinking there's nobody there. But anyway, that's hands-free answer back on intercom. All right, guys, we're back downstairs. You guys probably recognize these two phones because they were featured in my last video. I actually just realized right as I hit record that I actually haven't replaced the paper dis the uh, the paper Desi strips on these yet, so I'll have to do that this afternoon. But these are the last two phones in the house. Um, for right now, that's all I'm planning to do. I do have a single slot uh, 1968, 1969 or so uh, Bell System um rotary dial payphone that I do want to put as an extension on the system. Um, a friend of mine says that he has access to a full glass and aluminum phone booth that came out of a warehouse in Asheville, North Carolina. And so at some point I'm going to take my flatbed uh, commercial truck over there and pick that up. I'm just waiting for that to become available. But the long-term goal is eventually I'm going to probably put a phone booth somewhere here. This is the back of the house right here. At some point I'm going to put a phone booth and actually put a phone in it. But once that happens, you guys will definitely see a video from me. But for now, I think that'll be it. I appreciate the positive comments and look forward to more. And hopefully we'll have new content for you guys soon. Have a great day.